it's outside, it's walking around, it walks over some some uh, coon poo, and then sneaks in the house, and then gets into your cereal, and just kind of chomps away at some of the cereal. And uh, you know, uh, uh, three days later, Kara, you go, you pour your cereal out, and then something falls into your cereal bowl, right? And hopefully that doesn't happen, but it happens a lot in Corpus. Mm -hmm. Corpus, they have a lot of right? So, and they're big too, right? Oh, hold on a minute now. So, yeah, so anyway, uh, in, in Corpus, the roaches are so big, you can hear them coming a block away. They're that big. They, sometimes they hit you in the head, you know, they're so crazy. Well, okay, now, so in Corpus, if you're more affluent, like I grew up in the barrio, but I have a lot of friends because I got buzzed, and so I go over to their house all the time, and so every once in a while, we'd see one in the, because everybody's got one, right? we'd see one or two in the house. And the mother would always say, Jerry, please take that water bug out. <laughs> or the palmetto bug, right? And so I came back to the house, and there were some roaches in the house, and Dad was stomping on them. And I said, Dad, you just killed a palmetto bug. And he looked at me and said, you've been hanging out with the white friends too long. <laughs> 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 These are roaches. I just thought a lot of my friends thought, like, the, the palm trees in Corpus are notorious for roaches. Yeah, but I thought that's why they call palm little because it's loaded that they, they, they Mainly it's because people think the roaches are unhygienic, and so they don't want to say they have roaches, right? They'll call up the exterminator and say, can you come to the house for palm And they'll turn around, hang up the phone, and say, I'm going to go get the roaches. Yeah? So, yes, sir. Biological vector is something that's going to transmit an infectious agent directly into the body. Mosquito, um, a triatone bug, a louse, something like that. Because they're taking a blood meal. Mechanical is that the organism is going to land on something that's contaminated and then bring that with their legs or whatever and land on some food or something and then transfer indirectly the infectious agent from wherever they were to usually to whatever food stuff they were. Yes? An example of when Zornak is That's correct. Stuff. There's carrots and all kinds of things out there. I like to sit down there and you know, open up a backpack, read a magazine out of it, eat some carrots. When we talk about epidemiology, we've already talked about portal of entry, how organisms get into the body. But as epidemiologists, we also worry about portal of exits because the way that the pathogens leave the body is going to dictate how those pathogens can get into other people's bodies. So, can you guys appreciate the fact that if I have if I have shigellosis, it's going to lead through the feces of the body, right? And therefore, it leads that way. Then how is it going to be communicated to somebody else? Now, right? So people all around. Where if I have influenza and I'm sneezing and coughing, what's going to be the mode of transmission? It's going to leave my body through my either my nose or my mouth, and it's going to enter Anna's body how? She's going to have to breathe it in and drop a nuclear, right? So it's important that we know that because if we know things are leaving the body a certain way, we can intervene and say, be sure you wash your hands. And that's why any time we work with salmonella here, I always say, be sure you wash your hands before you leave them. Because the route of transmission for salmonella is not in the eye or the blood, it simply is people oral, right? Hand contamination to carrots, and then the carrots are contaminated. <laughs> communicable versus non-communicable, I've already talked about this. If it's communicable, I, if I have it, I can give it to you. If it's non-communicable, like, like, like influenza, if it's non-communicable, if I have it, Lyme disease, then I can't give it to Aaron. Right? It's just not possible. Anyway. So here you have droplet nuclei, and so this is a real famous picture, and you guys can appreciate the fact that some of these nuclei, these droplet nuclei are very large and heavy, 
So their trajectory is going to go and it's going to go down immediately, right? Where some of the others are going to be much smaller and lighter, and so they're going to go and they're going to go, and they're going to be floating back there, and they might hit Kristen on the nose or something like that, and then she rubs her nose and does this, and there we go. The virus is now inside of her mucous membranes, and she can try to that. What's wrong with this picture? This is an open meat market in certain parts of the world. And so to you and I, it's not acceptable. But to them, it's, it's just normal life. Right? Um, you know, there was a really interesting report that came out of Walmart. Because Walmart was allowed to open up a store in Shanghai that the Chinese government gave them the opportunity to come into Shanghai. And they were a failure for the first two years of operation. Why? Because they did everything Western, right? They didn't take into consideration how people bought and how people wanted to trade in Shanghai. And so by, by year one and a half, or 1.2 years, they actually got smart and they got people to go out into the neighborhoods and, and the different areas and different suburbs of the China proper. And they went in there and figured out how the Chinese like to buy things. And then, so then they had an open market where you could go in, you could pick up the food, you could touch it, feel it, you could tell them, I want this half of the meat, but not this half. And so then they became very, very successful. But you have to understand what population you're in and how they're expecting. And so this is acceptable in some parts of the world, but not here. I will tell you in Mexico, there's things like this in Mexico. Not, not, not like this. I mean, it's a counter or something. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you knew what went on in a restaurant's kitchen, you might not ever eat out again. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, and some of them you have a couple of again. That's really, that's really gutsy to do that. Walk in with a big coat in the middle of summer, put meat in there, and then walk in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about reservoir carriers and fomites. Okay? To me, a reservoir is an animal that's harboring a defectuous agent. Are you with me? A carrier is a human that is carrying an infectious agent. And the fomite is an inanimate object that can be used to transmit an infectious agent. So this phone is a fomite. My iced tea is a fomite. This, this uh, uh, pre uh, presenter is a fomite. These are all fomites. I know that if you actually read the textbooks and things like that, that they're going to call reservoirs all kinds of so I'm not going to kill you just because you don't follow my vernacular. Right? So if you say that a human is a reservoir for HIV, I'm going to be okay with that. Okay? Again, here's our biological, mechanical, biological, this is mechanical. Look at all of the biological vectors, mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, mice, blood-sucking flies, blood-sucking bugs, chiggers. And then the mechanical vectors are typically the housefly and the cockroach. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. I'm not aware that they actually cause trauma to people from contact. I have heard some stories where um, a patient was bedridden and they were and they were they had so much necrotic tissue on them, on their legs and stuff, they had moved out of bed, and nobody moved them, that when when the EMS folks went in there to actually try to help them, they pulled over the covers, and their lower body was just full of cockroaches, so they were eating the necrotic flesh off of this individual. But I don't think that they developed an infection from that. They were already Yes, they're poop. I think I'd go up. Uh, no, that'd be an excellent allergic to <coughs> We're allergic to, also, uh, dust mite poop, too. Oh, 
Oh, okay, zoonosis. So zoonosis is a term that means that you have the transmission of infectious agent from animal to man. Right? And so ladies and gentlemen, this is one mad little farm. Right? Uh, if you've ever, I've done it, so if you've ever want to look and screen for hantavirus, you go catch mice or rats, you pick them up with a scrub, and you do not let them go. Because if you let them go, the first thing you're going to do is they're going to turn around and grab you and they're going to bite you. They are vicious little hormones, right? And so you, this guy's mad. You can tell. Oh, no, no, squirrels, whatever, you know? But here's the deal. Here's one of Felix's rules, is wild animals don't let you touch them. Right? So if you, little boys are notorious for this, you down them you're down at Town Lake Lady Bird Lake, sorry. You're down at Lady Bird Lake, and all of a sudden your son comes to me, Mom, 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 look at the bat! Oh, my goodness. You know, what kind of exposure has, has that little kid? Has that little kid? Mostly they But look at all the different diseases that can be spread through animals. Rabies, yellow fever, viral fever, hantavirus, influenza, West Nile virus. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Pseudococcus, Epistolosis, Anthrax, Brucellosis, Plague, Salmonellosis, and then things that aren't as common, Ringworm, Toxoplasmosis, Trypanosomiasis, Trypanosis, and of fun stuff. Now living reservoirs, what I would call fomites, would be things like water, and would be things like dirt. Um, this is post Katrina, but it could have been post people or post Andrew. Um, and so really post Katrina, you know, we, we we still haven't really begun to understand how bad it should be. Because not only did we have flooding and levees didn't function like they should have, but we had dead people in the water for for weeks at a time. And so not only was this contaminated with because it was stagnant, but because there was decaying animals in the water. And so it became really, really dangerous, really dangerous. I think a lot of that has to do with the uh river because it's so far away from the sea that they actually get up there. So they're getting the flood like that happened. Well the fact of the matter is is New Orleans is in the fish bowl, right? So it's got all the levee system protecting it. The water smacks up here, and yeah. underneath yeah. it, they're below sea level. You know? And so anytime you have that kind of problem, you're going to have a lot of flooding. And if the pumps don't work, so as I begin to talk about the last material um, for the fourth exam, your fourth exam could be as early as next Thursday. Let's talk about factors that influence epidemics. So you have to consider the whole susceptibility. And so whether or not the person has been immunized or not. Okay. Um, what your genetic background is. Some of us are more prone to certain infectious diseases or other diseases just because of our genes. Okay. The health of an individual, the young and the old, are especially um, susceptible to disease. The young because they just don't have a mature immune response and the old because they're just not able to fight uh, infectious diseases when they actually are problematic for them. Culture, hey, the Hispanics are big huggers, right? And so when I first moved into Austin, Texas and I got a job with J&J, &J, I would come in, I'm a pretty happy person, I would come into the building and I would hug everybody. Oh, how you doing? Good morning. And one of my white colleagues pulled me aside and said, you can't hug everybody you see them. Right? Because a lot of them were uncomfortable with it. And so, you know, I had to I had to let go of my culture and not really hug everybody because it was making people uncomfortable. And I didn't mean anything by it. It's just simply a freebie to me. Likewise, my wife is good German stock. You know what I'm talking about? Blonde, Aryan, you know, whatever you want to talk. And so when I took her down to visit my family, my mother said, call the whole family together. You know, they're coming down and, and we're going to meet Beverly for the first time, right? So when we got to my mother and dad's house, there were cars all the way down, you know, 